All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at the basic idea of plotting with polar coordinates. So we have a polar coordinate graph. Now, the thing about polar coordinates is that the radii units start in the center and then they go outward in concentric circles. And then the angles go around the outside of the graph, um, telling you what that angle is that you're plotting the coordinate at. Now, you can have uh, polar coordinate plots that are done in terms of degrees. However, particularly in the calculus context, which is where we're going, um, you almost always use radians. And so we're going to think about this in that context. So let's look at our basic graph. We want to think about uh, what our graph is telling us. So first, remember, we start at the origin, we count zero radii outward, and then each one of these units represents one additional unit. Um, so this would be one radii outward. This would be two, three, four, and so forth, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this has 15 radii units. Now, one thing that you can kind of keep in mind is these are unlabeled, so you can adjust these. You could, for example, decide that every other one is going to be a whole radius, um, particularly when you're trying to make standard gra graphs of standard polar graphs. Um, you don't have very large radii for a standard cardioid or something like that. And so uh, a graph with this many fine grid lines can become sort of problematic in terms of plotting because they're just too small. Um, so what you can do is then let every other one be a whole number or let every four. So each each one represents a quarter of a radius. So again, try to keep the size of your graph and the size of the plot that you're trying to make, the, the coordinates that you're trying to plot kind of in mind as you're deciding how to label these radii units. But in principle, um, you can, again, plot very large figures if you need that many. Now, in terms of the angles, the angles always start out here at the positive x-axis. So this would be zero degrees or zero radians. And then we would work our way up typically to then this would be the pi over two radians position. And this would of course be pi. And then down here would be our three pi over two or negative pi over two, depending on how you're counting. So if you're coming this way, this would be negative pi over two, going around this way, three pi over two. And then of course, it would go back to two pi. And we've noted when we talked about polar coordinates in another video, there is not an exact perfect only single unique representation for coordinates in polar coordinates. Uh, depending on how many times you go around the circle, there can be multiple ways of representing uh, polar coordinates. Uh, the standard range of zero to two pi um, or negative pi to pi will, if you restrict it to that, will give you even then not a unique representation. You would have to further restrict it to that single one time around the circle range and insist that your radius be positive. And then you can represent it uniquely in that system. But we have at least in principle, especially when we're plotting functions, um, the idea of negative radii and the idea of negative angles and multiple representations. Now, then we subdivide these quadrants up and typically we try to subdivide them up in ways that make it easy to plot things. So one sixth or one twelfth are particularly common when we're working with radians. Um, you may see other graphs, um, if they're used to doing them in degrees, they may do them in 10 degree units, which is super irritating. But nonetheless, um, if that's the default, you will notice that. Uh, but we want 90 degrees to be our positive y-axis. And so if we 
divide that in half, then this will be our pi over four. And um, half of that. And so if there's six breakdowns this way, that's only getting us to a half. So six over 12 would be one half. So this is actually pi over 12. And two pi over 12 would be pi over six, which is our standard angle. And then four, three pi over 12 is pi over four. Three, uh, four pi over 12 would be two pi, would be, sorry, pi over three. Doing the math wrong. Um, this was pi over six. And then this would be pi over three. And then this one is five pi over 12, not a standard angle. But if we divide up the whole circle, the, the pi into 12 sections, then we do get our three common standard angles in the middle here. And usually this is just to make sure that we're plotting them in the, in the places where we want to plot them. We don't necessarily have to evaluate these non-standard angles as we do the plots, but we kind of have to keep in mind where we're positioning our common standard angles. And then these would, of course, continue this way. This would be our um, 3 pi over 4 over here. This would be our 5 pi over 4 down here, 7 pi over 4. Remember, these divide the quadrants in half. And then on either side of them, we would have our equivalent threes and six angles. So this would be our two pi over three. And this would be our um, five pi over six and so forth. Um, so again, as you go around, this would be your six, this would be your three. So seven pi over six. And this would be your um, four pi over three. And this would be your five pi over three. And this would be your 11 pi over six. So again, all your standard angles all the way around uh, in units of one twelfth of, of pi. All right, so once we have the basic idea of our plot, uh, we want to actually do some plotting. So let's come up with some points that we can plot. A typical point in polar coordinates is given as radius angle. So let's think about um, four pi over six and um, three, uh, two pi over three. And um, let's throw in some five comma seven pi over over four and maybe some negative um, three comma um, five pi over um, six. what's going on there. And then maybe one more. Um, negative four, zero. 
All right, so let's try to plot these on our graph. And let's change the color here so it stands out a little better, the hot pink maybe. All right, so let's think about our units. So our biggest unit is five. So let's say, since I have 15 tick marks, let's say one, two, three tick marks is one. And then one, so this would be one, two, three, this would be two. And then one, two, three would be three. One, two, three would be four. And one, two, three would be five. So every three tick marks is a whole unit that will allow me to space out my points as much as possible and um, give me plenty of room to work with. The angles never change when you change the radii. So it's always zero to two pi all the way around. All right, so let's start plotting with four pi over six. So usually I find it's easiest to start with the angle. So remember, this is our pi over four. And so the one next to it, but smaller is the pi over six. So here's my pi over six line. And then I scroll out until I get to my intersection of pi over six and the circle designated as four units from the center. So that would be my point. Now, what about three, two pi over three? So again, same deal. So this would be three pi over four. And this would be two pi over three. So I go out along this angle, three units. So one, two, three, that's one unit. One, two, three, that's two units. One, two, three, that's three units. So my point would be there. What about five, seven pi over four? Well, where is seven pi over four? Well, seven pi over four, this is three pi over four, five pi over four, seven pi over four is down here. So five units out, that's all the way out to the end of the graph. So that would be right here. Now, this is sort of the standard way that you do plotting. You have the positive radius, you have a, a positive angle, you go around, you plot the points, no problem. Now, what happens if you have a negative radius? Um, if you have a negative angle, you just go around the opposite way. But if you have a negative radius, the pr process kind of works the same way, but then the way that you measure the radius is what changes. So let's try find five pi over six. So that would be this one right here. So that's this line right here. So again, find the angle first. Now the problem with a negative radius is that if you go out toward where five pi over six is measured as an angle, that's a positive radius. So what we have to do is we have to actually go in the other direction. So the positive angle is here. And so, we're not going this way, we're going this way. So instead of going out three units that way, we're going out three units in the opposite direction. And so we're not going that way, we're going this way. So one, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, we're out here. So that is our negative three comma five pi over six. And so same thing if we have negative four zero, our angle zero is here, but we're not four zero, that would be here. Negative four zero would be this way. So one, two, three, that's one unit. One, two, three, that's two units. One, two, three, that's three units. One, two, three, this is our four.
you to plot it there. So again, keep this in mind as you're doing your plotting. Now, um, when you're doing functions, you're going to get negative radii on a semi-regular basis. When you're typically plotting points by themselves, um, that's not very common. But when you do go to functions, this will happen regularly and you will get negative radii values that come out of the functions. And in order to make the thing continuous, you just have to take that into account. Now, the thing to keep in mind when you're plotting functions that's different than when you're just plotting random points is that uh, you will have to then, after you've plotted them, connect the dots in the angle order. So always going from zero to two pi or what have you, you would um, start with zero and you would connect your dots all the way around the graph. Um, now we didn't put those in that kind of order, so we're not going to do that. But when you're plotting a function, again, you would start with your common angle, start with zero, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two, blah, blah, blah. And then you can use symmetry to help make um, the number of points you have to plot less than, um, hopefully not all the way, all the possible values all the way around. Um, but then connect your dots to make sure that you get a smooth curve, as smooth as possible. Um, polar graphs um, tend not to, unless there's weird powers in them, tend to be nice smooth curves and not anything like weird angles. So do try to keep your graph as smooth as possible. And given the shape of your function, um, there's usually exemplars that you can uh, kind of keep in mind to kind of know what your graph is going to be. The more complex your graph is, uh, the more you may need to actually consider uh, these values that are, again, not standard. Um, now, if you have a function that has multipliers in it, then you can pick these like pi over 12 angles, multiply by two, multiply by three, and you will get standard angles out of them. Um, but that original angle that you plugged in uh, will still tell you where on the polar coordinate graph to draw. So these are the basic skills. And again, um, practice, practice, practice.